Lugasi, and welcome to The Essence of Emerald. You know, today I'm going to talk about one of the most popular foods in the whole wide world, cheese. In fact, even Americans are eating more cheese these days. And uh, we don't have to go very far to get it. Actually, a good amount of the cheese is produced right here in the United States. Actually, a little, uh, this, is, this is true. 37 states are making cheese, but people are mostly putting it on hamburgers and pizza, tacos. Hey, come on out there, wake up. Today I'm going to show you some different kinds of cheese, how to cook with it, how to appreciate it. I mean, I'm so serious about cheese that actually we make our own goat cheese at the restaurant as well as a nightly cheese offering that we do, about six or eight different types of cheeses from uh, some local producers as well as some homemade cheeses. My friends there in Sweet Home Dairy Farms and uh, Crick Hollow Farms and also my great friend Fritz Maytag at Maytag Farms in Iowa. Great cheeses, one of the best blue cheeses. Well, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Let me show you some of my favorite cheeses. Goat cheese. I told you earlier that that um, goat cheese is chev. Comes in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. We make our own. We buy the goat's milk, make our own goat cheese at the restaurant. Very creamy type cheese. One of the uh, most popular French cheeses that are consumed by Americans. This is the Brie cheese. Has a wax coating. And uh, I love Brie. I like it baked like to do a little pecan and cane syrup crust and bake a whole wheel of brie cheese like that. Mmm, boy, you want to talk about good. Fantina, very popular cheese right now in the United States, used for a lot of Italian cooking and uh, even grated on different dishes. Uh, triple cream cheese, it's a very soft cheese, as you can see. Uh, kind of like a farmer's cheese, mild, uh, but very delicious. And uh, another popular cheese in America, this is the feta cheese. This is a block of it, and then it's crumbled, as you can see, what I'm doing there. And uh, used and sprinkled in a lot of Greek salads and a lot of types of salads around, right now being uh, popular. One of the most uh, popular cheeses at Emerald's Restaurant, and Nola as well, Parmesan Reggiano cheese. I mean, we use it just about everything. I like to sleep with the wheel of this. Actually, that's how fond I am of Parmesan Reggiano cheese. And as I said earlier, my good friend, Fritz Maytag, probably the best blue cheese produced right now in, uh, in the USA. Uh, a little farm uh, in Iowa. And uh, Maytag is actually that, that mold, as you can see right there. Uh, really delicious. And just a simple Monterey Jack. And uh, those of you that make my savory cheesecakes, you know that I have smoked Gouda. I'm a big fan of smoked Gouda. But then again, I'm a big fan of Maytag blue cheese. And guess what? When I come back, we're going to do an incredible dish with Maytag blue cheese. Little pears. Hey, whatever, stay with me. Don't touch that dial on the Essence of Ember. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Emerald Lagasse here on The Essence of Emerald. And uh, we're talking about cheese today, and I'm going to show you right now one of my all-time favorite sweet cheese desserts. So, actually, you could also use it for a little cheese course. It's my version of strudel, which is made with pears and blue cheese, Maytag blue cheese. You know, strudel first came to this country from Germany, and to make it, the dough had to be stretched and stretched. But my version, I used just some good old store-bought Filo or phyllo pastry dough. Now I'm just finishing up a little bit of our, um, our pears, and I diced them up a little bit. And uh, just want to get a simple little dice, good ripe pears, show you how simple this is. I've got some walnuts. I've got that delicious Maytag blue cheese, as I said. And then what we want to do to do this is we want to take a some phyllo dough, and you see how I have it covered. This is a, actually a little, it's damp, and uh, you want to make sure that it is damp because the strudel, the uh, phyllo dough, and I love phyllo dough. I love using it for 
lots of things, not only just strudels, but I like to put savory things in. I like to make little tots with them and all kinds of things. It's really a great dough, but it's very difficult to work with, uh, particularly if you, uh, you can't let it dry out. So what I've done is I've got about two or three layers of that phyllo dough. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure it's spread out. You see how it tears very easy. So then what we need to do is a little butter or some olive oil. We, um, we're going to brush either olive oil or a little butter. In this case, I'm using a little butter uh, to just sort of moisten a little bit of our phyllo dough. And then once we get it good moist, what we're going to now do is we're going to take a bit of our pears that have been riped, good ripe and sweet. I'm going to add some of those in there. You see, the pear that I'm using, you can tell it's very, very you know, you can, when you press on it, it's just got loads of, you see all the juice in that, all the sweetness coming out of that? You see that? Really good and ripe and really delicious. Now, when you're working with phyllo dough, again, you want to cover that dough. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of ground pepper to our pear and a little bit of salt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Maytag blue cheese, any kind of cheese that you like, and then I'm going to take some walnuts, just some walnuts. You could use some almonds, some pecans. And uh, we actually, I actually serve this as sort of a cheese course every now and then at the restaurant. Really, really delicious with a nice glass of port or a little uh, dessert wine by Barney Dune or... And what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck it and uh, give it one layer like that. Then actually what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in and fold this in like such. And then what we're going to do is really, really gingerly, we're going to start rolling this up. And we got make this little pocket. You see that? This little pocket. And we're just going to roll that up real nice to make our strudel. Now, you see how this is torn a little bit? Well, the density of what we have inside of this for a couple of three sheets obviously is not enough. In that case, what we can do easily is just go back, get a couple more little sheets, and then what we can do is start the process of this. We can just this stuff will tear on you very, very easily. So we're going to give it a little brush of butter or olive oil. And then what we can do is we can just take our piece of the strudel and set it here because the layers of pastry is not really going to harm it. If anything, it's going to help it in the layers of strudel. And then what we're going to do is we just set it, we form it, then what we can do is just roll over our end again, okay, stop, and then we can make our little pocket. Then we can just roll it up, look at that, and then we get a nice, beautiful strudel, and we're going to brush that with a little butter, and when we're ready, we're going to bake it. Now, that little pocket that I did, that little fold, there's a reason for that because you don't want the cheese as it starts to get hot in the oven to start seeping out. So all of the cheese and all those juice of the pears and the walnuts are going to be locked in. Now, to show you a little sauce that I love to serve with this, I got uh, a tiny bit of cream, just a little bit of cream that I'm going to add on the stove here. And then I add a little bit of walnuts. And I actually just peel a ripe pear 
and puree it in the food processor. And uh, that's actually what we're going to start putting in our little sauce. And then we're going to whisk in that puree of pear and just sort of cook it just a little bit. You know, not too hot. And uh, you can add a little cinnamon. You could add a little sugar if you'd like. You see how it's just uh, slightly coming up there a little bit. Well, we're going to take this off the stove. And um, actually what we'll do is we put this inside of the oven. And uh, have some here that I did earlier. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So we've got this beautiful strudel. And uh, this beautiful strudel, what we're going to do, we we'll just let it cool a minute. And uh, sort of with a palette knife, so it doesn't break, we're going to set that. You see how the, the uh, pastry is crisp, golden? It's not too, too dark. And we rolled it up. Now, you can either, when you're layering it, you could either sprinkle on the whole layer the blue cheese, the pecans, the pears. You could use apples. Or as I did in a little pile, you can sort of pile it like that and then roll it up. Now, when you're ready to serve this, like I said, for a little cheese course or even for a great little dessert, we'll put the sauce back on. And then what I like to do in the last minute is I like to then add a little bit of Maytag blue cheese to the pear puree. You see that? And I sort of whisk in that delicious blue cheese right into our pureed pears and little walnuts. And the cream is just giving it a little, a little texture and a little body. Okay? And we just slowly heat that up. Mmm. Really delicious. And then when we're ready, simply what we do is we serve that as the sauce. We serve that on the bottom as, of the sauce of the plate. And then, I just sort of always like to, I'm using a serrated knife. I just want to be careful. You see how the, uh, the dough and the layers that we talked about earlier? Now watch, what you can do is you can either cut a big piece, or what I like to do is I like to cut little pieces like this, you see? And then I like to take my little dessert strudel, just sort of place them just like that what a wonderful little cheese course and then you know this stuff right here you know I don't like to waste anything so we just take this little bodies of pastry little light airy bodies of pastry and just like little feathers we we'll just put them around there and then we'll just finish it off with just a beautiful, nice little sprig of mint. And then you have a wonderful little cheese course, that great glass of Portuguese port wine. And boy, I'll tell you, if you think this looks great, wait till you see what I've got next, because I'm going to do one of my famous savory cheesecakes, perfect for brunch. Stay with me on The Essence of Emerald. here and I'm just sauteing and caramelizing a few little onions and a little butter because I told you I was gonna make one of my famous cheesecakes you know maybe for brunch or perhaps for a little special hors d'oeuvre cocktail reception so just for you out there I thought I would make a wonderful smoked sturgeon and caramelized onion cheesecake but before I do that I want to thank all of you out there for all the wonderful letters and just all kinds of poems and things. Thank you very, very much. If at all possible uh, for a show I wouldn't miss on any day, thank you very much. It's like a symphony conductor. Thank you very much. Jeez, his programs are a joy, a way of love. Well, thank you, thank you. And a request for those good, good old beignets. Uh, you, I thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Frank and Marilyn uh, in Bay Village, Ohio. Uh, I really 
Enjoy your show. I love New Orleans. And uh, do you own a restaurant? Yes, I own two restaurants. Emeralds in the Warehouse District in New Orleans and NOLA, N-O-L-A. And uh, Sheila Morgan uh, in Hurley, Mississippi. Thanks for writing in. I hope you come and visit us. I hope you come and visit our great, uh, great city. Uh, this note's requesting a recipe uh, and uh, enjoying the show, particularly my grandkids, boys is aged to six and three and a half. They stop playing and run to watch you on TV. Hey, how about that? A built-in babysitter. Sue O, thanks for writing. Thank you all. I really appreciate that. All right. Hang on to your hats, folks. Here we go. We got to make a crust for this cheesecake. So I've got some breadcrumbs, just plain old breadcrumbs, that spring form pan. You remember I was telling you about that? Well, if you missed it, go and buy one of these. These are a great investment. Little spring form pan. Got the bottom on right there. Now, I got some breadcrumbs with a little bit of Creole seasoning. I've got some Parmesan Reggiano cheese, and I got a little bit of butter. Oh, let's give it a little more, right? Just those simple ingredients right there, folks. Right inside the cake pan, we toss it around, mix it around, and that's actually going to make our crust, if you can believe it. Get it really, really good and moist, okay? And then press it in. Press it down, and that... Give it a little lip along the side. You see what I'm doing right there? And that's actually going to make this wonderful crust for the bottom of our savory, not sweet, savory cheesecake. Okay? Caramelized onions. They're working away in our skillet. Woo! Looking good, too. This is some smoked sturgeon. You can use smoked trout. You can use smoked salmon. Hey, you can bring home your boyfriend. Smoke him. Put him in there. Whatever. This is good stuff right here. You can get it in a lot of gourmet stores and the fish counters. You can use all kinds of things. Smoked Gouda cheese and cream cheese. It's got to be soft at room temperature, eggs and a little cream. Now, watch this. We're going to take our cream cheese that's been soft inside of the, uh, in a bowl and just really at room temperature, really good and soft. We're going to put that inside of our KitchenAid. Now, watch how simple this is. We put that inside of our KitchenAid. It's going to save us a lot of time for beating because it's good and soft. We're going to uh, take that with our eggs, and we're going to start mixing that and, and making our little cheesecake batter, okay? Once we get that all incorporated, the eggs and our cheese, then what we're going to do is we're going to stop the machine and we're going to add a little bit of the cream and we're going to add that smoked Gouda cheese. Remember I told you earlier, I love smoked Gouda cheese. So now we're going to do that, okay? And we're going to fold that right inside of our batter. That simple, just like that. Once that gets incorporated, it's really quite easy, folks. You go preheat that oven about uh, 375 degrees. Preheat that oven about 375 degrees. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just take our bowl off, and then we're going to take our, our caramelized onion and put our caramelized onion right inside of that. Okay? And then what we're going to do is take our smoked fish. I'm going to use this smoked sturgeon. Isn't that delicious? Woo! tell you. Now, show you how simple this is. We're going to just fold those ingredients in there, okay? Fold those ingredients in there, and then we're going to just pour that batter right inside of our spring form pan and our crust, and you're going to want to bake this for about an hour, an hour and five minutes, and it'll be nice and golden brown and really delicious, and I'll tell you, you can use a water bath, a little pan with some water, or directly, and then what you have is you get this wonderful caramelized onion, and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Caramelized onion and sturgeon cheesecake, okay? Still a little warm. You cut yourself a little wedge just like that, okay? A little wedge of that cheesecake. Woo! Put that on side of your plate like that. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit of that spice, 
a little bit of chives, and then you take a little tarragon and lemon coulis, just like that, and woo! Boy, you got a caramelized onion and sturgeon cheesecake, Maytag cheese and phyllo, or this great cheesecake. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me today on The Essence of Emeril, and I'll see you tomorrow.